This is the video abstract for a paper that Carolyn McGettigan and I and other colleagues have just published where we were looking at laughter and we were specifically interested in two different sorts of laughter. Laughter that is produced under sort of deliberately controlled way, voluntary laughter if you like, laughter that you might produce in a social setting where you're not helpless with laughter but you are choosing to laugh and laughter that you can't help but produce involuntary, uh, genuine laughter for want of a better phrase, laughter that's going to come out and make a noise uh, and make you move whether or not you want to. Uh, to do this, we basically set out to do whatever it took to make each other laugh, and uh, I can confidently say that was the most fun I've ever had in an anechoic chamber. And we also produced sort of proposed social laughter, and we deliberately chose posed laughter, which wasn't sort of people going ha ha ha, but it was, you know, kind of uh, very positive, very strong, very recognisably laughter, but actually, but definitely not the sound of somebody helplessly laughing. And we found people are pretty good at telling the difference between those two. And what we did then was we put people into an uh, fMRI scanner and we played them laughs. We didn't tell them what they were going to hear. We didn't tell them anything about the experiment. We just told them to hear some sounds. We also played them some other sounds like disgust bleh, sounds and uh, other sort of acoustic controls. And those were mostly in there so that we could sort of draw people's ears away from the fact that they were really hearing laughter and the study was about laughter. Um, what we found afterwards was that regardless of whether or not you've sort of told people what to do, when people hear real or posed laughter, involuntary and voluntary laughter, the brain treats them very differently. So what we see with uh, the response to the involuntary helpless laughter is that people show a lot more auditory activation, probably uh, reflecting the fact that when you really laugh hard, you produce all sorts of sounds you wouldn't normally produce uh, in a controlled way, so sounds in a much higher in pitch, for example, than you could normally talk, normally produce when you're talking. And in contrast, when people hear the posed laughter, there's much more activation in, in sort of what are called mentalising areas, brain regions and medial prefrontal cortex, which are strongly associated with trying to work out what somebody else is thinking. What this suggests is when you hear somebody going, ha 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 ha, then uh, you, you know that they are laughing for a reason. They are deliberately producing that laughter and you're trying to work out why. Um, interestingly, in a previous study, we had found that there was a relationship between uh, positive emotions like laughter and activation in so-called mirror systems. So, brain areas you would produce to brain areas you would move or activate. Sorry, brain areas you would activate to move your face into a smile, for example, are activated a little bit when you hear people making emotional sounds, and it's very strongly activated when you hear somebody laughing. And we wondered if that was the basis of sort of a, the behavioural priming of laughter. Laughter is very behaviourally contagious. Uh, and we looked for this in this same study, and what we found was that um, with the real and the posed laughter, this mirror system didn't care about the difference between the two different sorts of laughs. Um, in contrast, the more somebody recruited these sensory motor areas that you see involved when people produce uh, facial movements like smiles or nose wrinkles, the more they do that when they're hearing the laughter, uh, whether it's real or posed, the better they are afterwards at telling the difference between real and posed laughter. So what we were seeing probably wasn't um, simply behavioural contagion. It seems to reflect uh, a way of understanding the laughter. So this would, uh, to rephrase that, I guess what I mean is the more you activate the mirror system when you're listening to laughter, the more you're getting ready to join in with laughter, the better you are at understanding what that laughter means. It's not just contagion, it's actually a way of understanding what you've just heard. Thanks. I've got references at the end.